Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut, a frenzy of activity going on right now as Artemis 1 prepares once again to try to take to flight. I'm not giving it the best odds, but who knows? I've been surprised in the past, and something else that surprised me, and really, in my opinion, a bigger step on the path to Mars was taken, not at the Cape, but at Boca Chica. And to update you on the road to 100K, we're at 89,441 subscribers. Thanks so much for subscribing. Just a few hundred to 90K, and then we're on the home stretch. So please subscribe. But I'll tell you, that static fire, beyond impressive. I mean, it was a sustained period of time, a little bit longer than your average static fire from SpaceX. And of course, 14 engines creating an amazing visual display, which I got from a number of different angles from some of the folks who collaborate with me. Thank you so much to Rocket Ranch, to Mars Embassy, to Lab Padre, everybody who provides me with their footage. It's fantastic. But the question is, 14 engines. Why? That doesn't seem to be an outer ring test or an inner ring test. It's an inconsistent number of engines from the configuration that we're looking at. Well, we're going to find out a little bit more about that right now. Hello, YouTube. I'm the Angry Astronaut coming to you from Spaceport Cornwall, standing right in front of Cosmic Girl and Launcher One. And this is... So first of all, let's address the elephant in the room. Those are concrete chunks pouring down from the sky as a result of this static fire test. And keep in mind, that's just 14 engines, not 33. You're going to see a huge cloud of unusual looking dust here. And really, all that is, is pulverized concrete. Or actually, there's a fair amount of that mixed in with dust, dirt, and grit. That is a cause for concern, and I have to admit, I fail to understand why SpaceX still doesn't have a conventional flame trench with this launch pad. Now, I'm not an engineer, nor am I a rocket scientist. I'm confident that they know what they're doing. But still, in the past, pulverized concrete has created problems with rockets. It can cause damage to various sensitive systems, to the engines, and other critical components that are exposed to the pad. That being the case, I really don't see how SpaceX intends to attempt an orbital launch before they actually build a damn flame trench. But then again, I'm not the expert. This static fire also revealed some interesting details about how the propulsion system is set up. As you can see, there are only 13 engines in the intersection of the booster. That being the case, you should have expected either a 13 engine test or a 10 engine test or a 20 engine test, depending on whether or not they were testing inner engines, outer engines, etc. What that suggests to me is that the propulsion system is actually more complicated that than that. We have inner engines connected with outer engines and perhaps multiple propulsion systems linked together into one massive 33 engine system. Once again, this is all guesswork. SpaceX is a very opaque organization. Even though in theory they are testing all of this stuff right in plain sight, right in front of our eyes, we really don't know a lot about the intricacies of the propulsion system or anything else about Starship, really. As a matter of fact, the number of engines in Booster 7 has changed over the passing months. It's a very interesting process being a tank watcher, and I must admit, I don't engage in it very often, but I talk to lots of people who do. 
So obviously this was a massive step forward. We are getting closer and closer to an orbital launch attempt with each passing day. However, we haven't had a 33 engine static fire yet. We haven't had a wet dress rehearsal yet, nor have we had any static fires with the stacked article, at least not any significant ones. And we're gonna have to do all of that, an entire static fire campaign with the full stack before they can really attempt an orbital to launch. Also, I still maintain that they're going to attempt a suborbital flight of one of the boosters before they actually try to fly the entire stack. I believe the FAA is going to require that. Now, Elon Musk has made it very clear recently that they're going to be as cautious as possible with this process, that a pad anomaly would delay a Starship launch for approximately six months or perhaps even longer. That being the case, I really think that we still have a fair amount of work to do, but I'm not going to take anything away from what happened yesterday. It was amazing, it was a huge step forward, and we are getting very, very close to an orbital launch attempt. That being the case, though, I really don't think it's going to happen until the first quarter of next year, and an orbital launch attempt is not necessarily a successful orbital test. I think it's probably going to take two or perhaps three flights at least in order to successfully drive the orbiter up into orbit and then to have it at least attempt a landing somewhere off the coast of Hawaii. I think we have a little ways to wait before any of that happens and I still believe that Vulcan is going to fly before Starship does at least as far as a successful orbital test is concerned. But if that's not the case, well, my butt is literally on the line so smash that subscribe we got to get to 100k also hit that like and as always stay angry about space